Okay. So I have this timer circuit from the example. Uh, this is the example coming from uh, the previous exercise. When we do the practical, uh, then after that, after we finish practical, after we finish a uh, practical session in our physical class, then the student must uh, do uh, exercise, okay? So this is one of the example questions of the exercise after they finish doing, uh, let's say, uh, LT spice or multi-sim and also this is applicable for freezing lah, if you like to draw this particular uh, circuit in freezing then you can use all right so to start with okay let me just make it larger image to make sure that you can view from there right so we have the timer circuit here and then the dc motor the transistor Transistor BD3904 transistor. And this is obvious, obviously the NPN transistor. And then we have one kilo ohms of resistor. We have a potentiometer here, which is connected to the LDR sensor, light dependent resistor sensor, and then the capacitor. So that's all of the component one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, including the batteries we have eight components to be placed on this breadboard, okay? To start drawing this uh, circuit on our breadboard, of course, uh, we will need to search for all of those components. Let's say uh, I'm going to start with uh, placing the Uh, I have a problem here. The Cisco web app menu buttons are blocking the place where I, I want to click. Let me just, okay. You can start, uh, click on the search, search button. I hope you can see that because this Webex menu is hiding the, the, the section that I'm going to. Okay, we can start uh, placing the timer. Okay, just search for the 555 timer and then click enter. Then you'll see some uh, timers here. Timer IC. Uh, I'm going to use this one. The timer IC we have here. Then uh, just place the timer IC everywhere you like to. Then uh, next is I'm going to find the NPN transistor. So take any NPN transistor, place it on the breadboard, and then LDR sensors. So this is the LDR sensor. Place anywhere on your breadboard, and then a uh, potentiometer. So there are few types of potentiometer that you can use, but normally I'm going to use this type of potentiometer. And then we have a capacitor, 10 micro, microfarad of capacitor. Just search for the capacitor. And then uh, this is the electro, electrolytic capacitor that I'm going to use. So basically in this uh, drawing, in this drawing demonstration, I'm not going to focus on the value or the, the components value, which is, for example, we have 10 microfarad of capacitor here. I'm not, I'm not going to specify this is the 10 microfarad. This is one microfarad. You can always change this to 10 microfarad as well. Doesn't matter. But basically the value of the component is not necessary now. What I'm going to show you is how you can arrange that component and do the wiring, the connections of the components, All right? So next is the batteries.
just click on the search of the search area of parts and then you will find the battery which is for example i'm going to use this uh not this one this nine volt battery here so this is my battery let me just control r to rotate this okay to put it somewhere around here and then next is uh, the dc motor so search the dc motor and i'm going to use this dc motor okay i have my dc motor placed here i place my dc motor here and then uh, some other components like resistor okay search for the resistor this resistor is 10 1 kilo ohms resistor so this resistor is somewhere close to the transistor i just put it over there and then uh, this is 1 kilo ohms resistor you can always change the value of the resistor from this dialog box this uh, drop down menus you can choose the 1 kilo ohm resistor for that resistor then uh, what else the dc motor we have one two three four five six seven eight so we have already i have already placed all eight components on this breadboard so what i'm going to do now is to connect uh to wire all of this component according to the figure that is shown in this uh exercise module all right so i will i will start somewhere but before i do this this is the, another tip that if, if we don't actually if from this uh drawing from every of this component actually we we don't know the terminal okay uh, for example for the battery normally the red one will be the positive terminal the black one will be grounding ground but for the motor green is not necessarily the negative terminal okay uh, so positivity we don't know all right for the motor for example and then for this particular potentiometer as well we don't know which one is pin number one pin number two and pin number three okay so if you can if you see in this figure in the second here the second diagram the potentiometer uh the middle one looks like it's disconnected to the ldr but not necessarily this middle pin will be connected to the ldr so and then also for the pins of this uh timer also so this timer this basically if you like to confirm you can just uh, google about that timer 555 five, five timer you can google to uh, to to know the arrangement of the pin to start from the left hand side one pin number one two three four and then start from the bottom five six seven and eight okay that is the pin arrangement of the uh, 555 five ti timer so basically for this particular timer if you closely look at this uh, timer if i can zoom this you'll see there is a mark okay at the pin number one next to the pin number one there is a mark so that you can you will know that this is the pin number one pin number two okay if i zoom this i think you can see that that is the pin number one so there's a pop-up uh box okay pop-up window here at the bottom which is show which clearly shows that this is the pin number one pin number two three four and then five six seven and eight okay so that is that is the arrangement of pins for any ic it start from the top left down to the bottom and then start from bottom go back to the top okay so now since we don't really sure the 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 pin of some of the components 
you can confirm it okay you should always confirm it by using the schematic tab here so if i click on schematic tabs here you'll see that some of the components has been arranged here so what i am going to do now is to rearrange this component which is uh, very similar to the one uh, we see here in this schematic diagram for example uh, this is the ldr i just need to place that ldr over there okay this timer i should control out to rotate this and make sure that pin number eight and four is at the top and then uh, this transistor is somewhere around here this is the battery should be a uh, battery is plus at the top and bottom one is minus and then this is the resistor that we have the only resistor here which is one kilo ohms resistor at the base of the transistor and then i have this capacitor i should arrange this capacitor somewhere around there which is i need to rotate this then the variable resistor okay so i'm going to place the variable resistor somewhere over there then rotate okay so so we have this sort of arrangement and then dc motor should be around there somewhere around there okay so it is clear now that we can just uh to make sure that our connection is correct in terms of pin numbers okay we should also uh, do it in the schematics so we have this sort of arrangement okay but basically the tip is you you can just connect it using the schematic diagrams okay so using the schematic diagram for example i'm going to connect my plus terminal of the battery to the plus terminal of the motor here so i just click on that terminal of the battery and then connect it to the plus terminal of the motor then rearrange the wire like that okay so that is the first thing i have successfully done for the connection of uh plus terminal of the battery to the motor so once you do that go back to the breadboard so you'll see that this is the terminal which is the plus terminal the green one is the plus terminal of the dc motor here so make sure that you do the connection uh, i'm going to use my top bus as a, a plus bus all right so this is uh like that so i have already connected plus terminal of the battery to the plus terminal of the dc motor then back to the schematics now uh pin number eight and pin number four of the timer is short okay it's short which is, is it is connected to each other so what I'm going to do from here is to connect this to the DC motor. Then make it something looks good, just like that. Then connect this to another terminal. Because pin number 8 and pin number 4 is shorted. So next is uh, I'm going to... Uh, for LDR, there is no polarity. So let me just arrange it vertically like that then connect from here to there so i've done connections for all the positive terminal of this circuit which is it looks like very similar to the the circuit that we, that we are referring now so back to the breadboard then you will see some wires right 
So this dot 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 wires is still not connected. So what I'm going to do now is to make to connect all of these wires. Okay. So basically, this pin number four will be connected to the positive terminal, meaning that to the top terminal, which is uh, this terminal. So the pin number four to the top terminal, top bus, top terminal bus, like that. And also, it is shorted to pin number eight, right? So pin number eight also to the top bus, positive bus. And then this pin also to the positive bus. The pin at the LDR also to the positive bus. Okay, just like that. So once you 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 have done with your connections, uh, wiring on the breadboard, sudden uh, you will see that the dot dot lines already disappear, right? Now uh, I have another one left here, which is pin number four. Is it pin number four? Pin number four short to pin number eight. Pin number short, pin number four short to pin number eight. Why is that? Was not connected. Um, control set. Let me just adjust this to make sure that the dot dot the dotted lines disappear. Oops. Let me just reconnect this. Make sure this dotted line is appeared. Mm. Can connect this to this screen over there. We still want to connect that. Come on, just make it like that. Okay, so we have done that at the positive terminal of the positive terminal. The rest you need to connect one by one for other components. Okay, for the transistor, uh, resistor to the IC, and the collector of the transistor to the motor. And then the emitter of the transistor to the negative terminal of the battery, just like that. And we have some other uh, component. I'm going to finish this, which is this one will be connected to pin number one. You can always do the connection like that. And then capacitor, negative terminal of the capacitor. So pin number five is, is not used. So this pin will go to the uh, bottom one, which is negative terminal. And I'm going to rearrange this to make sure that everything is connected. So that one and 
this one goes to the pin number this one oops control z Then uh, this pin will go to the source. Something like that. And then this one also to the source. So we have this pin also need to be connected. Done already, and then capacitor to the one pin of the potentiometer, and then this one will go to the pin number six. One terminal will go to pin number six, and the other terminal will go to the LDR then pin number three of the potentiometer goes to pin number seven. You can always rearrange this to make it nicer. Just like that. So this is uh, a complete schematic diagram of the this circuit this timer circuit so let's confirm our breadboard so see this terminal pin number six here will be connected to this terminal okay and then the ldr will be connected to middle pin of the potentiometer and then we have uh, this pin of the potentiometer connected to that one. That's it. So to make sure that it is, looks nice, you should uh, arrange rearrange this component. Make sure it is uh, some minimize the crossings of the connections. But basically, if you use this breadboard just temporarily to to do connection of your actual uh, circuit on the actual breadboard okay so you can just make just leave it like that no problem as long as you understand that uh, the connection of the wires it will be like that to make sure that it's easier it is easier for you to refer to this breadboard uh, diagram or the breadboard drawings to uh, draw your circuit on this uh actual breadboard throw breadboard actual breadboard eh? okay so we have finished that one i'm going to save this as one of the timer circuit all right so next is uh which is this one this one is quite easy i guess so i will skip that one it's it's quite easy so this is another circuit that shows the transistor with this is amplifier circuit we have input actually i have redraw this circuit let me just share it using um, my tablet So, okay, uh, now let me just demonstrate on how you can, once you finish this, what you can do is to crop this image using snipping tool. 
Okay. Open your snipping tool and then uh, crop this image. Okay. You we'll need to start from there and then. So that is the image that you will be going to save in your hard disk. So save it somewhere. Rename it and save it so that you can upload. So basically, acceptable format is JPEG or PDF. My any disk is still connecting. Okay, start now. So next is I'm going to use this uh, phrasing to draw another circuit, which is this circuit. So that particular circuit shows the uh, amplifier circuit. Okay, it has the input at the left hand side and then output at the right hand side. And then the VCC terminal that will be connected to some, uh, for example, five volt, uh, five volt input. Okay, so I have redraw this in my tablet and just show you. So this is the circuit just now. I have redraw this into a more something that is easier to understand, which is this amplifier has the input at the left hand side okay this capacitor will store some energy to be controlled or to maybe to to just to control this uh, base of the transistor so that if uh, the voltage increase and uh, the voltage level is more than the threshold value of the transistor and then it will Turn on this transistor, which is uh, the output will on. Okay, so the sort of thing about amplifier circuit here that we are going to I'm going to demonstrate on how you can sketch this amplifier circuit in the breadboard using freezing. So we have the some components here that we can start by to place the component. We can just search for the transistor. This is basically a NPN type transistor, right? Then uh, we have four resistors. So in this particular example, also it is not specified the value of the resistor or any other component. Just make sure that you search for the resistor. Then just drag one of them. Place it over there and another resistor, three and four resistor. Okay, and then one capacit two capacitors. Just search for the capacitor. So this is one cap capacitor at input and the other capacitor at the output. Just place all of those components like that. One, two, four, four resistor, one transistor, five, six, seven. So seven components. Okay, we have seven components on this breadboard has already been, already been placed. Now, uh, before I do the connection of these wires based on this uh, circuit diagram, a circuit schematic, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to re rearrange this which is, this is my capacitor, my second capacitor, my first capacitor, transistor. I rearrange these components to make sure it looks like the one that we, re, we are referring now. Okay, resistor has no positive negative, just make sure it, it's aligned. Then we have capacitor at the output, positive at the top. Okay. So, so we have finished rearrange all of the components here, and then I'm, I'm going to make the bottom part of this breadboard uh, of this schematic as a negative terminal or grounding terminal. 
So I will just connect all of the terminals as negative terminal of this circuit. Okay, then as usual, you can rearrange the wires like that. So this is the another connection from this capacitor to the resistor. Just like that. Okay, and then like that, emitter. And we have the output terminal somewhere over there connected to the resistor. And we have VCC here. So we have VCC and then connect another terminal. We are almost finished, but make sure that you always confirm with the uh, of the components here to make sure that you can uh, make a, a good connection, which is uh, to minimize the crossings of this uh, the wire. Uh, so you can put anywhere as long as the circuit is correct. Just put it like that. So this capacitor terminal will be connected to the that transistor terminal. Okay. You can just drag it like that. Okay, so it disappeared, disappeared now. So I'm going to connect this one to that terminal of the re resistor and then this one to that terminal of the resistor. Now it is already connected. So the dot, dotted lines already disappeared. Then this terminal to that terminal as well. Then this to that terminal. So we have finished some of the components. We still have to complete this circuit. I'm going to rotate this. The curve one is negative. The straight one will be positive. So input is on the left hand side. Then the output is of this capacitor to the base terminal of the transistor. And then we have got this connections of the other components. So I'm going to rearrange this until it looks nice, just like that. Okay, so I have done all of the connections. We have the VCC to be connected to this point, and then output will be connected to that point. And then input is from this uh, capacitor. And then the output is here. So we can create the terminal here to measure the output. So basically, I have done this for the schematic diagram. But maybe in this question, you will be required to upload the breadboard drawing. So you need to complete this breadboard drawing. Basically, uh, just make sure that you connect everything to make it. Complete, complete the circuit just like that. Right? So that's it. So this is the circuit that represents the breadboard circuit that the breadboard drawing that represents this particular uh, amplifier circuit. Okay. So that's it. And then save. Transistor circuit two, save it, and then next is just open the snipping tool and then crop this, and then save it somewhere in your hard disk. Okay. 
rename it and save. So that's it. Okay. So there's a lot of thing that you will need to do during your test. Okay. Make sure that always cross check between Blackboard window and also the schematic window so that you your connection is correct. All right. So make sure that your connection is correct by keep checking uh, the breadboard drawing and also with the schematic drawing. Okay, so that's it for the part one of this session, which is I have already finished. So if any question you'd like to ask, you can ask or you can watch uh, the recorded video later to practice at home. So it's always hard for me to to control my screen because the Webex uh, menu is always pop out and disturb. Okay, so next is I am going to demonstrate on how you can use AutoCAD to prepare a two dimensional drawings. Okay, so in this uh, lecture, in this uh, FEI 3202, we only cover the scope uh, of the AutoCAD is only for the two dimensional uh, object. Okay, two dimensional object in which, as you can see in this uh, exercise, it is mentioned here that the version of AutoCAD was AutoCAD LT version of 2005, which is quite old. That what we are, what we are going to do. Uh, what I'm going to do to demonstrate now is I'm using the 2021 version of AutoCAD that I think you have already also you you guys also have already download and install it in your computer uh, okay so you can do practice also if you like to so basically for the test two there'll be no uh, question related to AutoCAD but basically since uh, this module is covered in this session in this lecture in this course so i will demonstrate some of the example and on how you can use uh, autocad to draw this particular image to the image of this i don't know what what sort of object that we have now but basically i am going to refer to this one okay i am going to refer to this object and then open my autocad on the left hand side so I have done this. Actually, this is uh, the the one that I've done this before. So now let, let me just start with opening the new project. OK, so to start with, to start drawing this image, you need to open your project, open the new file. So I'm gonna, I'm not going to show you the basic. I mean, uh the way how you can draw the lines how you can make the circle for example because that basic things already covered in you can find any videos in the internet in the youtube also i've already shared the youtube videos uh that you can practice autocad which is the autocad for the beginners it has a uh, three uh, sessions of the videos, okay. AutoCAD for the beginners. By following all of these three videos, I think you can already understand on how to use uh, the basic concept or basic tools of the AutoCAD, right? So in this session, I will just show you on how to start from scratch to draw this particular image, right? Okay. So to start with, you can start, click on start drawing. All right, click on start drawing. You will see the canvas here. So this is the drawing canvas that where you can draw the image on this, of this uh, particular drawing, the of this particular image to this drawing canvas. You will see the axis of X and Y, but basically it has another axis, which is Z axis for three-dimensional object. So in this case, I'm going to refer to, to use this 3D, uh, sorry, this, this 2D XY axis. 
to draw my 2D image, right? I will start. Okay, so as you can see, we have some uh, lines and also some circle, right? So let's say uh, I'm going to start to draw uh, that particular uh, horizontal lines of four plus two unit, which is six unit. I will draw that one first. But before that, before you start, what uh, you need to specify the unit, okay? So this in this example, it is not mentioned uh, what sort of measurement for these dimensions, all right? So I'm going to specify the units as uh, centimeters, okay? We put some precision of 0 0.0 with uh, up to two decimal point, then click OK. So, so I have already specified the unit. So before you start drawing, make sure that you specify the unit, the suitable unit that is used. For example, uh, if you are referring to the object, which is the dimensions shown in uh, millimeters, okay? You will, you will have to specify millimeters for your unit, right? To start with, I'm going to draw one single line, horizontal line of six centimeters, all right? So just click on line and then uh, click somewhere to draw the horizontal lines of six centimeters. You can just put six over there, then enter. So you will see that very small, very small lines drawn here because it's in centimeters, right? So you can just zoom it. So we, I have this six centimeters of uh, horizontal lines, and then click enter. So I finish drawing that six, six unit or six centimeters of line. Huh? And then uh, next, what I'm going to do is to draw another lines, which is vertical lines from the edge of this uh, horizontal line. Okay. I will start, click on line, and then make a vertical line of five unit which is i'm referring to this particular uh, lines eh? which is i'm going to make the circle actually so i'm going to draw this line as well right so this line is five unit and enter okay. So I'll do it again, click on somewhere, and then make it five unit, and then enter to finish. Okay, so, uh, so you can track this, the middle line of uh, the middle point of this. So midpoint is, is checked here. So you can make a circle with, the first circle with radius of 2.5. So click on center radius and then find the middle point. Then this circle is radius 2.5. Okay, I've already made uh, the circle somewhere here. Okay, so, and then there is another circle with radius one. Click on radius, click on the center of the circle, and then specify the, the value, which is 1 cm. Okay, that's it. And then uh, from here, there is a line up to the bottom, which is 5 unit. So I'm going to make another line from edge of this. And then to the bottom, about five unit. Okay. Then another line from here, two units. Two. Then to the top, 
about two units. Four, six. To the left, about two units. To the bottom, about two units. Oops. Skip. Control Z. Let me just do it again. Two units there. And then to the top, two units. And then to the left, about two units. Then to the bottom. About uh, two units, and then to the left again, about two units. That's it. So I finished uh, drawing that particular lines at the bottom. So there are some, uh, you can trim some of the lines that you don't want. So click on trim and then uh, just remove the lines that you don't want oops i will need that one uh, just control z so i need to delete this this one also to trim this one then trim the other one here and this one as well okay this one also no need this one no need this one also no need so i would just finish that so i've just drawn this particular image on the left hand side then i have another uh, circle uh, it's like a arc here right so i'm going to draw the arc also you can use the circle as well instead of arc so i'm going to use this circle with the radius so for that circle, the radius is five. It starts from. Uh, uh, let me just draw one lines. Uh, about uh, diameter of six. Diameter of six. So this, the inner circle, start from there. The diameter of the inner circle is six, right? So it's 10 from here. So it's about 8. All right. So it's about 8. So I have done that. So then I'll make a circle using the radius of this. Start from here. So this one will be uh, 5. Another one will be. Three. I said. So that is wrong. Actually, I should start from uh, there. Circle. Radius. That means that this one is ten in. Five. That was not correct. Suppose that let me just trim this one first. So next, I am going to draw this particular circle, which is which has the diameter of three. So it is six unit from here about six unit okay then from there i'm going to draw the inner circle with radius of three with radius of three okay and then the outer circle with radius of five okay that's it so once you finish that, you can, uh, there is another line here, I'm going to draw it now. That line, which is about two units. 
then you can always use trim trimming tool to trim the unnecessary lines which is finally you've got this sort of image so so this is the image that i've done uh, drawing so now what i'm going to do is to specify the dimensions so to specify the dimensions basically for example if you like to uh, to specify this dimension of four units four cm just click on dimension so basically before you do that you can always change the uh, properties of your dimension whether you want to use the standard dimension or iso dimensions it's up to you so let's just use the standard dimension then click on dimension then just specify the first point up to the another point which is four units you'll see that it is quite big right so you can always change this oops so you can always change this dimension by click right right click and then dimension style uh, just uh, let me just show you how you can uh, make this smaller because we have a quite big dimensions there um, you can click on this dimension style i'm going to change the, the, the dimension style uh, to modify click on modify then you'll see this then click on fit and then from scale of one just reduce it to some uh, 0 0.2 then if you click that, then close, then the, your dimension already changed, right? So it looks nicer now with this uh, style. So next, uh, if you want to specify up to this dimension, for example, if you want to make the precision up to 0 point, uh, point 0.2, let me just check to dimensional so i think you can just uh, go to the style and then change it so you can go to the style and change the precision of your dimensions you can do that in your style but basically i've just i've just want to show you the basic thing that you can do to draw the dimension of this object so next is if you like to Put the dimension of the circle so just click on the dimension then make sure that you choose the radius okay then select the arc or the circle just like that so this one is radius one and we have another one this one is radius 2.5 okay 2.5 set so this is Europe. I think Europe unit they use a symbol like this, which is comma. They use a numbering like this, numbering style. You can always change it here. Modify and go to somewhere here. You can choose period. Okay, click OK and then close. So it will now change to period. That one is 2.5 radius. And then other measurement. You can always click on dimension. Then specify your dimension. Just like that. Then uh, for this one, should be 2 as well. Change it to linear. Okay. This is two. 
Okay. So we have another radius for the big circle, the big arc. Radius. This this one. This five. Okay. And then the bottom one is three. That's it. And this is another one which is linear, one dimension. Good. So that's all the thing you can do to put dimensions of your image. All right. So you can always save this after you finish. Save it to the appropriate file name. Then that's it. You already done. Okay, so I think uh, we have another figure here, which is uh, I think I don't have much time to to draw this figure. You can always uh, do it at home. Make sure uh, you do it at home. Try have a try uh, to draw this image on your uh, install AutoCAD at home. So for this session, I'm going to finish up to this time because uh, we are approaching 6.30 now because I'm going to open some, for some questions about anything if you like to ask, whether to ask about mini project or test, you will sit for next week, it will be test two. And then I will announce later where, uh, what is the time and date that you will sit for test three. So for the time being, make sure you prepare uh, for the test two to be held on next week. And then uh, your mini project to be submitted on Sunday next week. OK, so that's it. So any questions? Actually, you can. Uh, Print out this image, not that one. You can specify the output and then plot. Okay. So if you open the plot, then you will need to, for example, if you like to save this in PDF, uh, you can choose. So this is paper size. I will choose A4. For the printer or plotter, you can choose uh, DWF2 PDF. Uh, which one? AutoCAD PDF. Uh, DWG2 PDF, right? So this one. And then you can change this whether to landscape or portrait. Anything you like to, then click OK. Then just plug to any folder that you like to save. OK, save it. Then you get this image. So this is the image that has been uh, plot on the PDF. OK, so any questions? I'm going to finish now. If you don't have questions, then uh, we'll, we'll see you on next Monday for test two. Any questions? Uh, can I have a look on QR code? Uh, today, I, I haven't. I didn't share the QR code for today's session, right? I already shared it. So let me just share it again. So that's it. Can you see that, Suvitra? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I'm sharing now. So anything? Uh, thank you. Any more questions? Maybe I'm going to take leave lah for from tomorrow till Thursday. So we are there will be no session for this Thursday. So I will announce. I will let you know later the details later.
Okay, so if you don't have question, then we, then we will finish this session up to this time. We'll see you again later in the next week. Okay. So that's all for today. Thank you. Stop.